Let's bring in our panel associate research scholar at Princeton University, Dr. Lauren Wright, and TV personality and journalist Baker Machado. Guys, good morning. Thank you so much good for joining morning. us good today. Morning. Is our former president unstoppable? I'm thinking about this past week. Win after win after win. Lauren, I'm going to start with you here. Great characterization. As far as Super Tuesday and the Republican primary, yes, probably. I mean, the Georgia case was the one people were hanging their hat on as far as the riskiest for Trump, both politically and legally, because it's a former president on tape on tape asking the Secretary of State or pressuring him to find 11,000 votes. That is not the sort of evidence that these other indictments, other cases have. And now, whether it just looks like impropriety or it is, or it's unprofessional or it's biased, people who look at the Fonnie Willis situation know that it's tainted the case mm -hmm. at the very least, and it makes Trump's argument, which is this is all political, it's all about hunting me down, it gives that argument more credibility, at least to the average viewer. And Baker, we just showed a map of states that are going to take part in Super Tuesday. Do you think voters are going to be thinking of this when they, when they head to the polls? I mean, a lot of them, especially Trump supporters, have been thinking about this, as, as she mentioned, that this is, they feel like that he's being unjustly crucified in all of this. When you look at the 19 contests that are going to be held this week, it's really sort of hard to see any place that Nikki Haley might be able to win here. I mean, she did go this last week to Massachusetts, North Carolina, Vermont, and Maine, but even her, even her campaign campaign can't specifically say one state she thinks she's going to win. Now, she did get a lot of money over the course of February. She actually outraised Trump in both her campaign and her super PAC. But at the end of the day, when you don't really sort of have a strategy to sort of win one of these states, Trump could have this all locked up by the end of March, which actually could benefit him because he's going to be spending more time this month in these court cases with his lawyers than he would be on the campaign trail. I want to jump off your point. Haley made $12 million after losing the primary over the weekend. Why mm -hmm. are people still donating? And she spent more than Trump overall. It's yeah. really quite striking, as Baker indicated. And I think it's because, you know, there are some anti-Trump elite donors who want to make this case that there are alternative points of view in the Republican Party. It's probably good from an ideological perspective to hash out some of these issues about what does leadership look like? What should the role of the U.S. be globally? I mean, these are really important issues for our time and all of these global conflicts that are currently happening. And so there are some donors and some elites that see not a path for Nikki Haley, but that argument that we should at least be having this discussion. And, you know, a lot of people sell her short. She beat out five former governors, right. if you count Mike Pence in that group. And so really what she's accomplished is pretty remarkable. She's not going to get the nomination, but she is the last one standing. Sure. And look, 40 percent of voters are going for her in the Republican Party. That's which not is, a great that's point. That's not a great small point. number. Right. And obviously yeah. those voters would be up for grabs come November. But at the end of the day, what's sort of the exit strategy for her? If she's not going to be able to wrap up the nomination by the end of the month and Trump has most of the delegates or in place. Where do those voters go? And then what does Nikki Haley do? Does she join the no labels party? Does she do something else? That's going to be sort of the big question for her and her supporters out there. Do you there. think this mm -hmm. is a complication for the former president going to the election in November? I don't think I don't even understand why he cares that much about Nikki Haley, to be honest. I mean, every time she stays in the race and he beats her by double digits, that just makes his case that he's the nominee and the most popular one uh, much more credible. And so she's not a substantive threat to him. I think it's personal. She used to work for him. She went back on her word in 2021, said, I'll never run against the former president. I'll campaign right. against him. Clearly something went wrong. And she does make the point that there are various perspectives within the Republican Party. There is chaos and there is disagreement about very serious issues. Yeah, and it's, I'm glad you mentioned that because she doesn't call herself an anti-Trump Republican. No, because she, she obviously doesn't want to alienate any of those voters whatsoever. She has made the case that we have to move beyond Biden and beyond Trump, and she wants to be the next standard bearer for the Republican Party. So she right. doesn't want to be sort of chastised and put in this group of just anti-Trump Republicans. We are running out of time. I want to take a look at this legal calendar. I mean, look, yeah. this is a busy, busy next oh, yeah. few it's months. It's the March Madness of, it, of it, stuff. It Trump really is. Problems. So yeah. what do you think about Trump proposing to move the trial to August? 
do you think that'll be damaging or less damaging as we push it closer to the election? Look, all of these, I mean, it, it's interesting given the fact that a lot of these things are going to be coming up later close to the election. I don't even envision a lot of these even happening this summer. I mean, a lot of this likely Same. won't happen until after the election. I think the biggest problem right now for the former president is the financial aspects of this. I mean, just this month, he has to pay a half billion dollars in bonds. He's right. already sort of indicated he doesn't have the money already for it. He might have to sell property for that. So right now, the biggest headache for him is not these criminal proceedings, the Stormy Daniels case that happens at the end of the month. It's finding the money to pay these bonds down. All right, Laura and Baker, don't go too far, guys. Thank you so much.